Sagres Saveja. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Bows Reviews. This could be a funny video because my pronunciation in Portuguese is pretty fucking dire. I think it's called Sagres Saveja. I know that J is pronounced as J should be, and it's not a Y sound because of Jose Mourinho. It's not a, in Spanish, Jose. So there you go. I do know a little bit, but aside from that, Fuck knows what this is all about. I got this in Skunk Central yesterday. I went round there for my fix of Kozil. I had some in there and I noticed this was available, so I thought I'll give that a go. Now, <clears throat> Sagres isn't one of the biggest beers in Portugal. That honour goes to Superbock. And a couple of viewers on the channel or of the channel have asked me to review Superbock. I will get round to it at some point. Not today though, but I did find that. Didn't know where it came from, thought it was Spanish, and just bought it anyway, because it was a different beer. And here I am reviewing it now. Now, this beer, or should I say this company, uh, they're saying it was established in 1940. I think it was actually established a little bit earlier than that, according to their history, but 1940 was when they really did come to provenance in Portugal. The takeover of this brewery happened in 2007. I mean, there was other takeovers before, and they were run by other companies, notably, I think it was Scottish and Newcastle as well, had a stake in this brewery. They obviously got taken over, Scottish and Newcastle, they no, no longer exist anymore. But this lot were taken over in 2007 between a consortium of Heineken and Carlsberg. If ever there was an axis of evil, that'd be it. But they took, took it over and they, in fact, I think they took over a lot of breweries at the time. I think it was the Scottish and Newcastle's portfolio and they divided them up amongst each other. And this lot are now owned by Heineken. So that's why I can get it round the corner in Kent, in Skunk Central. It's not because there's any particularly great export routes from Portugal to the United Kingdom. It's because they're owned by Heineken and they will sort that out for them. So I thought I'd give it a try. I don't know whether anybody's ever tried this before, but I would imagine, and I've never been there, but I'd imagine if anybody's ever been to the Algarve in Portugal, you may have seen this because the, there is a, actually a place called um, Sagres, which is on the Algarve, and they reckon it's a very, very nice resort indeed. I've never been there. My missus has been there, and my mum went there. Here's a little story for you, all right? <laughs> I'm not going to fucking bore you with the details, right? My mum was very traditional, and she had her, her own views on food, and her and her mate, I used to call them the two Ronnies, she was Irish as well, she was from Dublin, she knew her from Ireland and obviously she, my mum lived in Tottenham and, and her mate lived in Walthamstow, but they knew each other from when they was kids. And her husband died and obviously my old man died in 1990, so they used to knock about together. And they were, I, 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 me and a few of my mates went on holiday with them and said they were absolutely fucking batty. But they went to Portugal one year and I remember uh, she was packing her bag the night before and it was on the bed and I remember I, she was packing all these t this tin this is when you could bring food over uh, on a flight and she was putting all these tins of stuff into her into her uh, case and I said what are you doing she says oh Jez I don't trust that foreign food I, you don't know what you're eating when you go over there so I, so I was going to go to Portugal I picked up one of the cans and I looked at it and I think it was I think it was pickled herrings or something like that, roll mops or something like that. And I looked on the side, it said made in Portugal. And I said, for, for fuck's sake, mum. Didn't mean anything to her. She uh, she still took it with her. Yeah, that was me mum. Crazy woman. But she went over there, so it was very, very windy. And the weather was nice, but you had this real big breeze that came in off the coast. And obviously, if you look at the map of Portugal, it, the next stop is America there. It's, it's, it borders the Atlantic and you're going to get some pretty hefty winds coming from there. 
but apparently it is a nice result. And you may have seen this beer there if you've been to the Algarve. Um, I know Superbock is the most popular beer in in Portugal, but this stuff, or the, sort of say this company, they sponsor, they're big into the football, and they sponsor the Portuguese league, or they used to, and they sponsor the uh, Portuguese national football team, and they also sponsor ben, Benfica as well. Now, I've always thought that about, and you see it in certain other football leagues as well, where you see the league being sponsored by a company, not specifically a beer company, but a company, but also sponsoring a team as well. I just, that doesn't sit right with me, and I always, it's always in the back of my mind. I know football's corrupt, and I don't care. I've seen refereeing decisions in football, and you've only got to look at the Italian league as well to see that. I mean, half of them referees in the Italian league were done for corruption, bribery, and there was a scandal years ago in, in the UK. Well, I don't think it was the Premier League, it might have been, or was it the old First Division, with Max Fiction from a, a few Liverpool players and a few Wimbledon players as well. So football, when you've got that amount of money, don't tell me there's no corruption in football. Of course there is. How did Dubai get the World Cup? That's fucking disgusting. It really is. We have to disrupt, disrupt all our domestic seasons now to go out and or to them to go out and play football in 40 degree heat. I don't fucking, that doesn't sit right with me, but you know, I'm not gonna make this about football. This is about beer. So before I start going and off and ranting and raving, I'm gonna get this beer reviewed. This is a 330ml bottle. It is 5% and it contains a little bit of alarm bell. I was looking at the ingredients and it does, yeah, it does. It contains maize. Now, in the ingredients on their website, or on the website, it says it contains non-malted cereals. Well, what's that gonna be? Yeah, it's gonna be maize or something like that. Even though maize is fermentable, I don't think it particularly makes the beer taste nice. However, I have slightly changed my view on that after drinking Jupiler. And I tried something else the other, the other night, I think it was, I reviewed it, and I can't remember what it was. It might have been an ale where they put maize into it, and it didn't taste that bad. So maybe I'm talking absolute shite. So there you go. But that's all really, it contains the usual stuff. It, does, it says it doesn't contain any colorings or preservatives or anything like that. So it's the usual potentially macro brewed fare. With that in mind, let's get it open and let's see what's going on. Right, I'm gonna use one of my posh glasses today. Well, not my posh glass, but a glass that was brought over from Germany. And it is a Ratzherrn Pilsner glass. Not tried that, I should try that actually. I've just ordered a load of beer off of House Trembling Madness today. And I've managed to get some St. Georgenbroi uh, Gold Martzen, which I'm really, really looking forward to. And I've also, hopefully, managed to secure secure some of the Iinga Altbirish Dunkel, the unfiltered one. And I put a special note on my order saying, don't send me the original Altbirish Dunkel, send me the unfiltered. So if they fuck that up, I'm gonna have the right arm and I'll be ringing them up online and you can hear it as well. But there you go. This smells really funny. This has got a horrible, nasty, astringent smell to it. Now, I'm going to let that die down a little bit because it could just be a mixture of the, the sulfurous gases that have built up in the bottle. But that, that really doesn't smell nice. No, it doesn't. And I've, and I've found this a lot with beers that are brewed un, under license over here. And there's Percy. What do you want, you fucking troublemaker? Come on, come on, get your 15 minutes of fire, your five minutes of fame. Come on, oh, you are getting heavy, my friend. What are you up to, eh? Who have you been annoying today, you little git? What do you think of this? Get out of it, you're not having any of it. Right, that, that smell has died down a little bit, but it's still got a bit of a, a horrible, I wouldn't say a tannin. Do you see that? That burp. 
He does that in my face sometimes. He is absolutely disgusting and does not give a shit. Well, he does actually. But uh, yeah, and less, less said about that, the better. I'll oh, come on, Per, stop fucking about. I'm gonna put you down there, mate. Not literally. Um, yeah, it's got a, it's got one of them horrible, it's like a burnt, burnt malt, burnt cereal. That's what I'm trying to, yeah, it's burnt cereal and just general nastiness. Hmm, okay, I really hope this doesn't taste as bad as the aroma does. Wish me luck. Bottoms up. Well, I have to say, the aroma is a bit misleading because that doesn't taste that nasty. And in fact, it does taste reasonably clean. Wow, it is cold, it's just come out of the fridge. Look at the carbonation on that. Oh, hang on, I'll get the, get a better view of that. Head retention's pretty crap. But, it actually isn't the worst beer in the world. Now, <clears throat> as I say, they do make a big thing about the Natural ingredients that they put in here, um, there's no colourings, there's no additives, no preservatives, and they use hop extract in here, and as I say, they use maize as well. But that horrible aroma is sort of still there, but it's not translating into the, into the flavour. At this temperature, which is chilled, well actually it's more than chilled, it's actually cold. It isn't too bad, however I think if this warmed up a bit it would be, I think it would be a bit nasty. I imagine in Portugal they serve this ice cold so you're not really going to get the the real flavour of it if you drink it over there but it's refreshing, I will say that and to be honest if if you're eating um, if, if you're eating roll mops or pickled herrings that you brought over from the UK that are made in Portugal, this would go down very nicely with it. Mm. Yeah, I have to say, it's inoffensive. It doesn't really do anything. It's it's just serving a purpose, and that purpose is just just for refreshment. There's no flavours in here as such. Well, there is flavour. That's that's a lie. They're not big flavours. They're not memorable flavours. They're just flavours that taste of lager. I know. As a beer reviewer, that is such a fucking cop out, isn't it? But it's it does taste of lager. There's no. There's nothing to make it remarkable but there's nothing to really make me pull a face and and for it to to be chucked down the sink it ain't bad i will say that at this temperature don't ask me to review this at room temperature because that could be a rent yeah that's okay and just by okay i mean just okay if i was in portugal and there was nothing else and it was scorching hot, and I was at a bar, then I would probably drink some of this and just just be just be ambivalent about the beer I was drinking and hopefully there'd be some good company to take my mind off it, but it's just unremarkable. There is there is a bit more of a an aroma coming through. It's got like a <clears throat> I wouldn't say roasted cereal, but it's like burnt cereal. It's got an astringency to it. A very slight astringency now. When I opened it up, that was huge. Which I'm wondering, I don't know, does that mean that the it hasn't been lagered for long enough? Or, or when I say lagered, I, I mean left to mature. I know Fosters and a lot of them, Heineken and Carlsbergs, they, you know, where the Germans leave them for weeks to be ferment, uh, to be matured, as you should do, to let all the diacetyl and the 
the sulfur just rise and do what it's got to do. I think uh, them Fosters and Carlsberg and all that, I think they, they mature it for a matter of hours. That's what I've heard anyway from a, an ex-employee um, of a, one of them macro brewers who used to brew Fosters, believe it or not, and uh, he said, yeah, from, from the final boil to the, uh, to the can was about six or seven hours. I mean, that's why it tastes so shit. But there you go. Yeah, it's just, just inoffensive. Want a drink by the pool or but on the beach, ice cold. I mean, I don't know whether you'd, you probably would actually probably get it from a glass, but if you got it on tap as well, I imagine it would be refreshing. But them sort of beers, that's what they're for. And of course, this is a region in the Algarve, so that's what they brewed that for. I imagine, and I could be speaking out of turn here, but it's, it's the same as San Miguel as well. Um, when it's brewed in, in Spain or Portugal for these sort of touristy results, flavour goes out the window. That's what you're getting, basically. But there you go. And... Uh, it's it's just okay. I'm I'm not gonna probably I probably won't buy this ever again unless I go to Portugal. I know there's a, a big bike fest there every year, Faro. I don't know if you've ever heard of it or not. A couple of mates have been to it. Said it's good, but it's it's expensive. They've actually ridden over there, and uh, I've never ridden in Portugal. I wouldn't mind actually ridden in Spain, and France and Belgium and uh, and Holland as well. Flat as a witch's tip. Good biking country. But the weather's a bit unpredictable. But there you go. Anyway, uh, I'm fucking rambling again. So, what's the verdict on Sagres Cerveja? Is that how it's pronounced? I, I think it might be. I don't know. I could be wrong. Any Portugueses out there, let me know. Uh, it, it's just okay. Don't buy it for any you know, road to Damascus enlightenment when it comes to the beer, because this is just pretty run-of-the-mill um, Mediterranean beer designed for tourists to just be refreshed on, on warm days. So it's it's serving that purpose and it's doing it okay. But of course, them beers are not brewed with flavour in mind. And I get it, I, you know, it serves a purpose and they don't make any big claims about it. I mean, the marketing does, but mar that's what marketing people do. But yeah, but it's, it's, it's not offensive and it's not nasty. The aroma was a bit fucking nasty on the opening, but that's what happens with lagers sometimes. But yeah, I, I would probably wouldn't buy this again, as I say, unless I'm in Portugal. The mark I'll give that is a five out of 10. It's not doing anything wrong but it really isn't doing much for me at all. So I think five is a is a fair mark. And uh, if you see this in your in your local shop, unless it's cheap and there's nothing else, and I don't mean nothing else apart from the usual suspects of Carlin, Fosters, etc., then this may be slightly nicer. But yeah, don't go out your way. You're right down there, Percy. Fucking, he's licking his fucking paws off the idiot. But there you go. Well, it could be worse. You could be licking your bollocks, couldn't you, mate? You look, <laughs> the look on his face when I said that. Jesus. So, yeah, five out of ten. I recommend it if there's nothing else in the shop. So, there you go. And remember, beer is working class champagne.